In this video, we're talking about power rule for exponents, which tells us that when we have some base, whatever it is, it could be a variable, it could be an unknown, it could be a whole number, but whatever base we have, and we have that raised to an exponent, when we raise it to an exponent again, all we're gonna do is multiply the exponents together. So this is equal to x to the m times n, or just x to the m n. So in other words, we just multiplied these two exponents together, we kept the base the same. So what happens when our exponents are real numbers? Well, it's the same thing. Our base is a, so we start out with a, and then we multiply our exponents together, three times two. Three times two is six, so our answer is a to the sixth power. Now the reason this works, if you wanna prove it to yourself, if you look here at a cubed, you know a cubed is the same as a times a times a. Well, when we square that, that means we want two factors of a cubed. So here's a factor of a cubed. We want two of them. So a, a, a. Now we have two factors of a cubed. This is just six a's multiplied together. And when we add those all up, that of course is equal to a to the sixth. So if you're ever not sure that this is multiplication, if you ever forget the rule, just write out whatever's inside the parentheses, in this case as a, 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 and then square it. Write out the number of factors that you have of that, and this will help you realize that it's a to the sixth. What if we're dealing with all real numbers here? Well, we could do it two ways. We could use our power rule, multiply the exponents and say three times two is six. So this is equal to two to the six, which is the same as 64. Or we could simplify what we have inside the parentheses first. Two cubed is eight. So we could say eight squared and eight squared is equal to 64. And remember, if you're not sure, write out this two cubed. So that's two times two times two. And then we're told by this exponent that we want two of these factors. So we multiply times two times two times two. There's two factors of two cubed. And when we do all this multiplication together, two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32, times two is 64. So there's multiple ways to arrive at the same answer. Let's look at something a little bit more complicated. Here we have a quotient, a fraction, x squared y cubed in the numerator and z in the denominator, and we want to cube the whole thing. Well, when you do this for a fraction, you want to deal with the numerator and the denominator separately. So this is really the same as saying x squared y cubed to the third divided by z to the third. We've just carried this exponent across the numerator and the denominator, so we've separated the two. Now, when these terms inside of the parentheses are multiplied together, we can just distribute this three across both exponents, and the result here will be two times three for the exponent on the x gives us x to the sixth. Three times three is nine, so we get y to the ninth. And then in our denominator, z to the three is just z cubed. Remember, if you're not sure about that numerator, you could have written out the factors. So we had a factor here of x squared y cubed. So x squared y cubed is our factor. That's what's inside the parentheses. But then the exponent tells us we have three of them. So we write out three of them, x squared y cubed, x squared y cubed. And then if we just rearrange here, we put all of our x's together. We have x squared times x squared times x squared times y cubed times y cubed times y cubed. And if we add up all of our x's, we have x to the sixth times y to the ninth, three plus three plus three. So that's another way to get to this numerator if distributing this three across the exponents gets a little bit confusing or you forget. So one final example here, we have three to the negative two all raised to the power of two. This power rule works even with negative exponents. So if we just use power rule directly and we multiply our two exponents together, Negative two times a positive two is a negative four. So this becomes three to the negative four. When we have a negative exponent, we can change it to a positive by moving this whole value to the denominator. So when we do that, we get one over three to the positive four, and then three to the fourth is 81. Remember three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three is 81. So we get one over 81. We could have also done what's inside the parentheses first. So three to the negative two, we could have made that exponent positive by moving the whole thing to the denominator. So we would have gotten one over three squared, all raised to the power of two. Then remember, just like we did here when we had this three, we can distribute that exponent across the numerator and denominator separately. So we would have had here in the numerator one squared, and in our denominator, we would have had three squared squared again when we distribute this two across the numerator and the denominator. And now here, one squared in the numerator is one. In the denominator, we get 
two times two is four, so three to the fourth, which we already know is 81. Or we can do what's inside the parentheses first, three squared is nine, and then we have nine squared, which we know is 81. So either way, we get one over 81, the same answer that we got when we did this with power rule directly.